Hello, Primary 5. Welcome back. Hope you are all pretty fine. Today, we are going to go through the events of Chapter 11. But before we start, I want you to remember with me what was the end of Chapter 10. What happened in the last chapter? Try to remember. Very good. Okay. Yes, there was a war between the two teams, the Honest Men and Vince Crew. And how uh, does this war end? Yes, the war ended by the winning of the Honest Men. So now, I want you, while reading, to try to answer these questions. Who died at the beginning of the chapter? What happened to Captain Smollett? What was Dr. Lives's advice to the captain? What did the captain do after his talk with the squire? Jim had an idea with an excuse for himself. So you can write these questions so that while reading, you can focus on the answer. Now let's go to read the chapters together. Are you ready? Now open your story book, page 48. Great. The title is Sea Adventure. The doctor, Gray, and I ran back to the house. We saw Hunter lying still after a knock on the head. Joyce lay dead, shot through the head, and the squire was half carrying the wounded captain. So here, guys, what was happening? What was the situation in the stockade? Hunter and Joyce, were, uh, uh, they died. And who was wounded? Yes, very good, Captain Smollett. And who was taking care of him? Yes, Squire Trelawney and, of course, Dr. Livesey. Let's go back to the story. The pirates didn't return, and we had time to take care of the wounded. Out of the eight men who fell in the fight, only three still breathed. One pirate, Hunter, and Captain Smollett. And of these, the first two were nearly dead. The pirate died first, then Hunter only a few hours later. The captain's wounds were very bad, but not dangerous. The doctor told him he mustn't walk or move his arm and to speak only when it was necessary. So what was Dr. Lips's advice to, huh, to the captain? Yes, he advised him not to walk or move his arm and not to speak to speak only when it was necessary in order to uh, feel better in the coming days okay let's go back to the story after dinner the squire and the doctor sat by the captain's side and talked then a little past noon the doctor took his hat his pistols and the sword put the map in his pocket and walked off quickly through the trees so, what did the doctor do? Of course, yes, supers. He took the map, okay, and uh, he took his hat and a pistol and a sword. Then he walked away. I guess he was going to see Ben Gunn and thought the doctor was and and thought the doctor was lucky to be walking in the cool shadows of the wood the house was hot and smelt of blood and there were dead bodies lying all around suddenly i wanted to get away from that place and i had an idea i would go and look for ben gunn's boat perhaps we would need it sometime what was my excuse for myself Although I knew it was wrong of me to leave only two unwounded men to guard, to guard the stockade, it was also wrong for me to leave secretly. But that is what I did. So who can tell me here, guys, why 
do you think Jim wanted to leave the stockade or the house? Yes, excellent. The house was hot and smelt of blood and the dead bodies were everywhere. So that's why he thought of leaving the house or leaving the stockade and going out to look for Ben Gunn's boat. At the same time, he had an idea and he had an excuse for himself. What was the idea and what was the excuse for himself? Yes, very nice. The idea that he wanted to go and look for Ben Gunn's boat, maybe they will need it after that. And his excuse for himself, he felt uh, guilty to leave the stockade with no uh, guard. And especially that the captain was uh, wounded. But at the same time, he said, my excuse for myself that I will go and look for something beneficial, look for Ben Gunn's boat, maybe we will need it later on. Okay, let's go back to our story. I filled my pockets with bread, then took two pistols and the powder for them. When Gray and Mr. Trelawney were helping the captain, I climbed quickly out of the stockade and ran into the trees. Okay, so how was Jim Hawkins ready for going out? What did he do? Yes, excellent. He filled his pockets with bread and he took two pistols and the powder for the pistols and he go, he went away. But how did he go? Yes, secretly, even without telling anyone, he climbed quickly out of the stockade and ran into the trees. I made my way towards the east coast. It was late in the afternoon, but still warm. Soon, cool air began to reach me, and suddenly, there was the sea. I walked along the edge, then up to a small sand-covered hill. Ben Gunn had told me his boat was hidden near the white rock, and I found that rock farther along at the beach. The little boat was hidden in the grass, a small, rough thing made of wood and goat skin. So what happened? Yes, Jim had already started going to look for Ben Gunn's boat. And he remembered that Ben Gunn told him that the boat was hidden under a white rock or by a white rock. So he found the white rock and he went there. Uh, he found the little boat and he was describing the boat that it was hidden in the grass, a very small boat. It's very rough, made of wood and goat skin. So what do you think about Ben Gunn's boat? Is it a strong boat? boat enough to sail with or it's a little bit weak yes very good it's a weak boat why because it is made of goat skin and wood let's go back to the story i knew i should go back to the stockade now but an idea came to me and i sat down to wait for darkness as the last of the day disappeared there were two lights in the blackness one came from a great fire on the shore where the pirates sat singing and drinking. The other came from the Hispaniola out at sea. So guys, uh, what was the idea came or popped up to uh, Jim Hawkins' mind? He decided to keep waiting till darkness and then he will start moving with the boat. Which boat is it? Yes, Ben Gunn's boat. So, while he was waiting for blackness or for darkness, there were two sources of lights. There were two sources of lights. The first source of light was coming from fire on the shore where the pirates were sitting together and singing and drinking. And the other one came from the... Huh? Yes, very good, from the Hispaniola at sea. Let's continue. I put the small boat on my shoulders and carried it to the edge of the water. 
Then I put it in the sea. It was a very safe boat, but difficult to control. It turned every way except one I wanted to go. So here, guys, how did Jim manage with the boat? Was it easy for him to sail the boat or it was very difficult? Yes, it was very difficult for him to sail with the boat because it was difficult for him also to control it. The boat was very light, uh, going everywhere except the way that the way sorry, going everywhere except the way that he wanted. So it was very hard to control Ben Gunn's boat in the water. The sea carried me out to the Hispaniola. I knew. If I cut the anchor rope at the wrong moment, the Hispaniola would make a sudden move out to sea and my boat might be knocked out of the water. So I took my knife and cut almost through the rope, then waited listening to the sound of two loud voices coming from the cabin. Both men sounded drunk and both were angry. So what was happening here, guys? Yes, he decided to take his knife and to cut through the rope, but he didn't do that. He kept waiting. When he was waiting and trying to go to the Hispaniola, what did he hear? Yes. He heard the sound of two loud voices coming from the cabin. Both men sounded drunk and both were angry. Who do you think these men are? Let's see. We don't know what in now. At last, the wind turned the ship towards me. And now I cut all the way through the rope. As fast as I could, I pushed my little boat along the side of the ship desperate to get my little boat along the side of the ship, desperate to get away before the ship crashed into me. Just I gave the final push, my hand found a rope over the end of the ship. So what was he trying to do? Jim Hawkins here, guys, was trying to go on deck of the Hispaniola. He was trying to cut through the rope or to climb the rope to push his hands. But at the end, he succeeded to go by holding the rope part by part and going to the Hispaniola. I don't know why I took hold of the rope, but I did. I pulled my boat near to the ship, then stood up to see through the cabin window. I had wondered why the two men weren't on deck. But one looked through the window gave me my answer. It was Israel Hands and the man in the red cap now locked in battle, each with a hand round the other's neck. So who were the two men? Yes, they were Israel Hands and a man in a red cap or with a red cap. They were putting their hands on each other's neck and they were quarreling together. Let's continue. I dropped down in the boat again, looking over my shoulder at the shore. And there, right behind me, was the pirate's fire on the beach. Then the wind, with sudden violence, turned the Hispaniola. And my little boat with it. And we were both sailing fast into the open sea. So while Jim Hawkins was watching, uh, the quarrel between Israel hands and the man with the red cap, he found that the wind was very violent, pushing the Hispaniola and also his little boat, and they were moving very fast by the sea. There were sudden shouts and the sound of hurrying feet as the two men ran on deck. I lay down in my boat, sure that when we reached the rough open water, that would be the end for me. I lay there for many hours, but at last I fell asleep. 
and in my small helpless boat dreamed of home and admiral bembo in so i want you to stop here and tell me what do you think while jim was sleeping he dreamt of the admiral bembo in what does this show about jim hawkins what does this show about him what does this symbolize Excellent. He was missing his place, was missing his mother and father, was missing his old life, his old peaceful life. And this is called nostalgia. When I miss the old days, when I miss my old place that I used to live in, this is called nostalgia, guys. Missing my old days. So he felt here missing. He felt very loyal to his place, his mother and father, and to his old life. Let's go back to the story. It was daylight when I woke up. The sun was still hidden behind Spyglass Hill, which came down to the sea in dangerous cliffs on the sides of the island. It was no place to row ashore, or I would be killed on the rocks. Also, the boat was so small that when I rode, the waves came over the sides of the boat. I decided to wait until the sea took me somewhere safer on the north side of the island. I must keep the water out of the boat, I thought. But I can row a little in the smooth places. So, guys, why do you think Jim Hawkins was a little bit, uh, or not a little bit, he was very afraid here. Why do you think he was afraid of? Yes, he was afraid of losing and get the boat destroyed because of the violent strong wind. Okay, so he was trying to keep sailing using his hands, but of course he is not strong enough to keep sailing like this. It was very tiring work and it kept me busy so that I didn't look up and see the Hispaniola until she was just half a mile away from me. But something strange was happening to her. First, the ship turned north, then suddenly to the west again. She's out of control, I thought. Then the ship turned again, big and dangerous, as she came closer and closer to Bengam's little boat. Suddenly, I was on the top of one wave as she came thundering over the next, and there she was, almost upon me. I jumped up, pushed the boat under the water with my feet and caught one of the ship's ropes. Then I heard the Hispaniola hit the little boat, and I was left with no way to escape. So what happened at the end of the chapter? Who can tell me what happened to the Hispaniola at the end of the chapter? Yes, super as you are. The Hispaniola was out of control, going to the north, then going back to the west. Then it became big and dangerous and coming closer and closer to Ben Gunn's boat or Jim's boat right now. At the end, what did the Hispaniola do? Yes, the Hispaniola hit Ben Gunn's little boat and Jim was left with no way to escape. Thanks guys for listening. Hope you understood every single word in the chapter. Now let's move to the questions to answer them together, but you're going to find the answers written on the eSchool. Now guys, I want you to open your story booklet page 51. Let's answer the questions together. Choose the correct answer. Number one, in this chapter, we knew the death of, yes, very nice, Hunter and Joyce. Super as you are. So one, C. Number two, Jim left to look for Ben Gunn's boat. Yes, secretly, to B. Number three, Ben Gunn's boat was made of, Excellent. Three, C, wood, was made of wood. Number four, while Jim was looking through the cabin window, he saw, very nice, Israel hands and another man. Number five, at the end of the chapter, 
Jim, very good, was left with no way to escape. 5B. Exercise 2. Answer the following questions. Describe the situation in the house after the fight went between the pirates and the honest men. How was the situation? Huh, try to remember. We said this at the beginning of the chapter. Excellent. The smell of blood was everywhere. Hunter and Joyce were died. And the doctor and Captain Smollett was wounded. Very good. Who was taking care of him? Squire and Dr. Livesey. Super is the R. Where did Jim decide to go secretly? Where did he decide to go secretly when an idea popped up in his mind? Yes, excellent you are. He decided to go and look for Ben Gunn's boat. Maybe they will want it later on. Excellent. Number three, how did Jim manage to get out of the stockade? What did he do? What did he prepare? What did he take with him? Yes, super as you are. He filled his, po his pockets with bread and took two pistols and the powder of them and he went quickly from the stockade. Excellent, super as you are. Number four, what happened after Jim found the boat? After he had found uh, um, Ben Gunn's boat, what did he decide to do? How did he wait? Try to remember. Excellent, guys. He decided to wait for darkness and he carried the boat on the edge, uh, on his shoulder to the edge of the water. He, want, he waited for darkness, then he carried the boat on his shoulders to the edge of the water. Super as you are. Number five. What did Jim see from the cabin window when he reached the Española? When he was looking from the window, who did he see? What did he see? What were they doing? Excellent! He saw Israel hands and a man with a red cap. They were quarreling and each was putting his hand on the other's neck. Supers. Number six. Jim dreamt of home and the admiral of Bembo. What does this symbolize? Try to remember what did I tell you? Excellent. When he kept dreaming and remembering his old days, what does this show? This is the idea of? Very good. This symbolizes the idea of nostalgia and loyalty to his place. He was missing his mother, his place and his old days. Very good, because he was living a peaceful life. Super as you are. Ben Gunn's boat couldn't help that much. Explain. Why do you think Ben Gunn's boat wasn't enough to help too much? Yes, for sure. Because Ben Gunn's boat was very small and rough, made of wood and goat's skin. Supers. Number eight. What happened to the Española in the end? Yes. The Hispaniola turned north, then to the west again. It was very big and dangerous, and it was out of control till it hit the little boat. Supers you are. Now, let's guess, let's guess together. What is the meaning of wounded? When I say someone is wounded. Very good. Injured. Wounded means injured. He has an injury or a wound in his body. And thundering. What part of speech is this word? Yes, it's an adjective. So thundering is an adjective to describe how big and dangerous something is. Thanks for listening. Hope you understood every word and every single question. Meet you in the next chapter. Bye-bye.